Hello and a very warm welcome to Meghan and Harry News YouTube channel. Hi, I'm Alex and how are you all doing? So last night I watched the first two episodes of the new Netflix series and it's a competently made documentary. I will talk about this after I've watched the third episode tonight, but from the first two episodes it's a documented recap of how they got together, media intrusion, Harry growing up, Princess Diana and her struggles with the media. Probably the most interesting part was getting to see Meghan's mother, Doria Ragland, speak on camera for the first time, at least in an interview setting, and from what I could see, they come across fine. But one scene in the two episodes has been picked on and caused quite a stir, this scene of Meghan reenacting her first curtsy to the Queen. There are loads of Twitter comments with thousands upon thousands of replies over this curtsy reenactment in the show. I remember while watching it, it did stick out in my mind, and I did think to myself that this could be used by the media to again try and accuse them of being disrespectful. But the only reason that it did stick out was that there was nothing else in the first two episodes that could be used to make them look bad. This is how desperate the media machine is to try and get one up on them. Now, the accusations about the curtsy are that Meghan is mocking the Queen. This is ridiculously unfair. It comes across to me as someone not only making fun of herself, but also of the situation, which for anyone who has a mind that is still working properly. The fact that you have to curtsy to your future mother-in-law when you meet her in private for the first time is a very crazy situation to find yourself in. The notion that one goes to visit your fiancé's mother for the first time and are told that you have to curtsy to her is a highly unusual and one reaction to it would be to find it highly amusing. The actual meaning behind a curtsy is a traditional gesture of an inferior to a superior. Now, there is one thing to do this in public with the royal family, you would expect these archaic rituals and customs and for them to be practiced in public in front of the cameras, but you wouldn't expect it to be that way in private, especially when meeting your future mother-in-law for the first time. You would think that these customs would not be necessary and the expectation of them would cause awkwardness and embarrassment. And this attitude of not moving on and expecting people to bow to you in private, etc., has created this situation that we see in the scene in the documentary, which to me is clearly Megan laughing at herself and her awkwardness at doing a curtsy for the first time, but also to the sheer ridiculousness of the situation she found herself in. And the media are already trying to brainwash the public into thinking that the first three episodes of their documentary are nothing but treasonous. This is The Telegraph. Prince Harry and Meghan's Netflix show, deeply offensive to Queen Elizabeth II's legacy. Series lands direct hit on monarch, decades of work, describing the Commonwealth as Empire 2.0. This is so over the top, it is really silly and it reveals the complete bias of the mainstream media, how transparent that they are on one side only. As I already stated, I've only seen the first two episodes, haven't seen the third, but as of yet, there is nothing in these episodes to warrant these ridiculous over-the-top headlines. Personally, I hope that in episodes four, five, and six, they start talking about the royal family and their PR team, and their involvement with the media and the planting of stories. I hope they start naming names and particular stories. One springs to mind, the William and Kate aeroplane story, how that was set up and used to attempt to tarnish Meghan and Harry's name in what looked like a planned media attack. In this Telegraph article, it says the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's Netflix documentary has been accused of attacking Queen Elizabeth II's legacy after the Commonwealth was described as Empire 2.0 in the program. The series has landed a direct hit at the, monarch, at the late monarch's decades of work to lead the Commonwealth into a new era, royal sources believe describing it as a deeply offensive to her memory. Contributors to the Sussex series, part of their multi-million pound Netflix deal, called the Commonwealth a privileged club of formerly colonized nations. Well, it is, isn't it? That's a fair description of it. A privileged club of formerly colonized nations. 
That is a factual statement. And yet the media want to argue that a factual statement is wrong because it makes the royal family look bad. If it is true, then it is true, end of story. It goes on to say, the documentary also makes claims about the royal family's financing of the historic slave trade. Writer Afua Hirsch told viewers, it's often said that Britain had a deep south that was just as brutal that actually enslaved more Africans than the United States of America did, but that deep south was the Caribbean. Again, what part of this is not true? They are merely pointing out facts. If it makes the royal family uncomfortable, then that is their problem and their history. This joke of a Telegraph article goes on to claim that these statements are not factual, but gives no reasons for their claims. And the reason is because they have no claims because they can't argue with historical facts. The royal family's links date back to the 16th century in 1562, John Hawkins was the first known English person to include enslaved Africans. Jamaica is another example in the 18th century was described by Charles Leslie as a constant mine, whence Britain draws prodigious riches. It contributed greatly to the wealth of individuals thousands of miles away, such as William Beckard, Lord Mayor of London and the owner of well over 1,000 enslaved people whose statue still graces Guildhall in London, but more significantly, it enriched Britain by filling the coffers of the treasury with money from taxes levied on sugar and rum. Britain was the greatest slave trader in the Atlantic world during the 18th century, sending nearly one million captive Africans to Jamaica between 1655 and 1807 resulting in a population of enslaved people barely over 300,000 due to horrific mortality rates. So these details and the royal family's historical involvement is not factual, says The Telegraph. They are a joke. Let us know your opinion in the comments and I'll be back tomorrow with more on this documentary.